Now the clock is ticking. You only have a short period of time to do all of your investigations. Once this line's out, it's only going to be sedated for a short period of time. We are in Gir National Park in India, on the trail of the last remaining Asiatic lions in the world. The park is still reeling after the outbreak of a deadly virus, CDV, which killed dozens of lions just a few months ago. The rangers are doing everything they can to make sure that the virus does not strike again. Today we're in the lion hospital where a sick lion has been brought in for treatment. This one goes by the name Akela, meaning the lone one, since this lion has no pride. So this is a young adult male that's been brought in because it's, it's got quite obvious injuries that they couldn't treat in the field. It's a truly wild cat, so they can't just sort of expect it to, to lie there and take, um, have x-rays taken and this sort of thing. So thankfully they've got it in one of these crush cages, which will mean that we'll be able to squeeze it against the bars and able to give it a, an injection to sedate it. It might look quite distressing, but it's the way to keep the lion safe and the people safe, but it still takes quite a degree of bravery because this is, uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be too happy about all of this. These are the same drugs that I would use in a domestic cat in the UK. That was very gentle, that was good. It's quite skinny, very thin lion. The team of vets will give Akela a thorough examination to make sure he does not display any signs of the dreaded CDV. But to do that, they had to sedate him. Everything has to be managed carefully. So it's a big decision to take an animal like this into captivity and to, and to sedate it. It's not without risk. This isn't something that should be considered routine. This was a cat in my clinic back home. We would have somebody holding it and tapping its eye, seeing how deep it was, seeing how responsive it is. So. You just can't risk it. Sedation isn't like a proper full anaesthetic. They can still move. And you have to be absolutely sure that this animal is not gonna get up and take a swipe at you. So no response. After a while, Dr. Solanke tests the lion to check if the sedation has worked. Are you happy? Huh? You happy it's deep? Uh, we wait also five minutes. Yes, yeah. It's just a little bit responsive, mm. isn't it? Covering the face, muffling the ears. These will have ways of reducing stimulation. Everybody keeping calm, keeping quiet. We'll allow the lion to go completely asleep. It's a delicate balance. There is no such thing as a safe anaesthetic. You can't guarantee that this animal won't die. So you've got to give them enough to make it safe for the operators, but not too much so it's still safe for the patient. Carefully, the team lift the lion out of his cage and transfer him onto a stretcher. Akela is now ready to be brought in and examined. First thing that they've identified is that it's very lame on this front left foot. It's it's ripped, it's ripped one of its nails out in the past, but that's healed, that's an old injury. But actually on this equivalent of our finger there, it is a um it looks like it's got a um a, 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 a nail injury as well. So they're just gonna check for any bone fractures as well. So 
bones are intact here. There is a missing nail. We saw that before an old injury, but on the same toe, this is very swollen. This, li this light gray um, around here shows that this toe is very swollen compared to the others. So there's something going on there, but it would appear to be very superficial. There's no bony involvement. Try and get its tongue out of its mouth so it can breathe well, so. The problem with the drugs that we've given it sometimes actually reduces the, uh, the blood flow to the periphery, to the extremities of the body. So you'll, they'll always look a little bit bluer than they would do normally. There you go. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, 98 is good. Are we happy with that? Pulse race 66, that's good. Oh, so this is where you're going to get your blood samples from. So uh, it's, it's too small in a domestic cat. We'd use the front legs, but the skin is so thick um, on the front legs that you can't really access that. So the nice thin skin on the inside thigh uh, will allow you to get the blood samples you need quite easily. And these bloods will be used to see not just about the health of the lion in terms of its blood counts, its, um, its biochemistry, see how its liver and kidney function is. Um, but it will all also be used to, to try and get some information about disease. Is there any distemper antibodies there? Is there any um, babesiosis? These sort of exotic diseases that these animals can, can really be susceptible to. What's great about modern technology now is, is that these benchtop analyzers, as they're called, this will basically take this sample and immediately give us an idea of what's going on in this animal. You don't have to send it off to a lab. And it helps you tailor your treatments right away because this animal is still asleep. So we have an opportunity to treat something if we see it here. It's got a very high white cell count, um, which is, you know, we knew it was going to happen. It's not, actually, I'd be more worried if this had come back as normal. So this is a normal immune response, which is, which is good to see that this animal is, is working uh, appropriately. The Asiatic lion was almost wiped off the face of the earth in the early 20th century. Barely a dozen lions were left in a remote corner of western India. The forests of Gir became the Asian lion's only refuge. Slowly but steadily, the species has fought back and today they number in over 500. A remarkable turnaround. Health checks are carried out regularly on the lions. Akela, the lion we saw earlier being treated at the hospital, was discovered during one of these regular checks. A group of foresters noticed his injuries and after consulting the medical team, they had agreed to bring him in. Capturing a lion is not an easy task, as you can well imagine. Tranquilizing darts are an option, but it's always better for the animal if the job can be done without the use of drugs. When capturing a kala, the foresters opted to use a ring cage instead. The way the cage method works is rather simple but effective. There is a trapdoor in the cage which is kept open by a rope and held by one of the trackers sitting in a tree. Hidden away from sight, this tracker will be waiting for the right moment to pull the rope and trap the lion. Then they place some bait in the center to lure in the sick animal. Once the lion has walked in, the door is pulled shut and the capture is successful. This was how Akela was captured and brought back to the lion hospital. There's multiple bite wounds all over here. There's abscesses bursting out, and this is the problem with lions fighting each other. They put bacteria deep under the skin with their long teeth, 
and they burst out in horrible abscesses. We see this in domestic cats. There is a question as to should you treat these because obviously this is a natural injury. So if we're being too interventionist, if we're getting in and treating these animals, are we interfering with natural selection? Are, are we breeding weak lions? But it's very difficult to, to have a, a, an animal under your care and not want to help it. If you look at these, these claws, there's a, they are very, very strong, but you can imagine if that goes through the skin of another lion, there's a lot of force that comes through these claws. They're very, very sharp, uh, and they're very broad and strong, but they snap them, and they, uh, they'll potentially lose them forever. There's one toe on this other foot that the nail has been ripped out, taking the bone with it, and it now has one less weapon to, to defend itself and also to bring down prey. Look at these teeth here, these are extraordinary. Amazing, amazing teeth. Look at them, they're as long as my finger. Absolutely beautiful dentition. He has made a mess of his face, yeah? Mm. Lots of old scars, he's had a lot of fights in the past. Mm. Yeah. Although this lion looks absolutely beat up at the moment and these wounds look horrific, you'd be amazed how quickly these will heal. That's the sound, isn't it? So we've probably had about 20 minutes since the anaesthetic was a safe point to get hands on. And obviously everybody's working very fast. So we're nearly there. Cleaned all these wounds up, shaved them, flushed them. Uh, it will be a matter of giving some antibiotic, I like to think some pain relief, and then uh, wake the lion up. Because of territorial animal, mm -hmm. every day males are fighting for their territory. Yes. So that you'll see lots of these injuries. And dominant male. This is a lawn, nomad male. Yeah, so he keeps walking uh, into the wrong place uh, and. The team of vets has been working for the past hour to treat the lion. They've discovered several wounds, one of which has become infected with maggots. There's nothing worse than finding a wound full of maggots. Doesn't matter if you're a seasoned professional, you know, a vet or a vet nurse, when we see in the clinic, you lift up a skin flap and there's just maggots pouring out the wound. It just makes you feel but for the animal. It must be horrendously but painful. It's getting quiet. It's waking up your lion a little bit. How long have you got left? One hour. We're here in Gir National Park, the last home of the Asiatic lion. The forest staff are kept busy all year round, but monsoon is a particularly tough time. The rapid response teams have to be ready to set off at a moment's notice. After all, the life of an animal could hang in the balance. Today, they've been called in to help an injured leopard. In this case, the trackers who found it had to tranquilize it. But Dr. Solanke still needs to make sure the animal is definitely sedated before he can approach for treatment. Once they know it's safe, they quickly get ready to give a full health check right there in the field. As they take its temperature, they notice it's extremely high, so they decide to water the animal to try and keep it cool while they finish carrying out their checks. Dr. Solanke decides he needs to bring the leopard back to the hospital. So the team transport it into a cage and off it goes into the lion ambulance.
As they bring the leopard inside the hospital itself, it wakes up from its early sedation, and as you can see, it's not best pleased. They need to use what's known as a squeeze cage to hold the leopard in place while they get to work. The leopard may not be happy, but this is the best place for it right now. To make sure they can monitor this leopard in the future, Dr. Solanke injects him with a microchip, which will help them keep a full record of its medical history. Now we are checking the microchip. At any given time, there are more than half a dozen leopards and lions being treated at the hospital. After they settle the leopard down, Dr. Solanke heads off to check on Michaela, the lion the team were treating earlier to see how he's doing. His treatment is finished for now and he's ready to be transferred back to his cage. So this is a major intervention. This isn't something that they would do with every call out. They get about 60 call outs to lions a year. Uh, but only 5% of them will actually be brought back here to have this degree of uh, investigation and treatment. Most of them will be treated in the field and released straight away. So you're happy? Ah, we are very happy. So how long will you keep this lion here for? Uh, for one, one month. For a month? For a month. Okay, and then when you're happy, he's 100% he'll ha. go back into the wild? We will release into wild. Yes. After one month. So they're able now to just give some IV fluids into the tail um, as the lion recovers. And uh, this will really help with the way it feels. Most of its debilitation is due to dehydration. You get an infection, you stop drinking, you get a fever, you feel dreadful, and then once you're dehydrated, that's it, you're really in trouble then. And in fact, actually, it's the one treatment they can give here that will probably make the biggest difference to survival rates is, is fluids. The great thing about this particular sedative is that half of it is reversible. You can basically turn it off by giving an antidote. So they'll be able to wake the lion up now that they know he's back, he's safe, quick injection, 10 minutes, they'll be up and about again. They'll continue to treat him over the next few days. They'll have antibiotics in his food. Um, they'll give him pain relief. Uh, obviously lots of water uh, and lots to eat. So he stands a very good chance of getting back out into the wild quite quickly and uh, in much better shape than he came in. <laughs>